All right, guys, welcome back. So, uh, you know, we have this. I can pick it up. And I can slam this guy and it says connected. It's all really great. But what I want to do is I want to make this enemy intelligence guy take some damage. Uh, to do that, I need the concept of a health. Now, when we copied our third person character, we got health as well as several other variables, right? I've deleted some of those variables here. But, you know, even though it says health here and there's a health in third person character too, let me just show you, there's a health here as well. These are two different healths, right? The game really, I mean, there's no way for the game to know which health you're talking about unless you first cast two. Right? This is why you have things like cast two so that you go to the appropriate blueprint and this way you don't have to name this health character and this you, you don't have to name it health player. You don't have to do, get into all of that. The casting makes sure that it's a two step process to get the health variable rather than one step and the, because of that you can name everything quite obviously. Okay, so in our enemy intelligence, make sure you're doing this in enemy intelligence and not third person character. You can actually shut off third person character. Uh, first what I want to do is I want to display the health on his head. Right? I want to have that displayed near his health, uh, head. To do that, I'm going to create a new blueprint. I'm going to create a new widget, in fact. Uh, go to widget, right click, user interface widget. Right, let's just call this health bar enemy, health bar for enemy. Okay. Now I'll click this and uh, we have this, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open a progress bar. Make this a little bigger and have this become really small. Okay, so this is all I need. Maybe a little, little smaller, I guess. Just being perfect. Okay, so usually what we do is, you know, we bind this, right? Last time we created a binding, but this time I'm gonna show you an, another way to do this. You can use the bind tool and you can reference uh, whichever uh, enemy character or enemy intelligence that you want to refer to, but we're not gonna get into that. We're just gonna compile and save. I just need a progress bar right now. So what I'm gonna do is in our viewport, I'm gonna add component, look for widget, and I am going to select the main menu. No, I'm gonna select the health bar enemy widget. See, you can see the widgets there. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the draw size a little bit. 250 actually 200 change this to uh, screen when you do world uh, it can be a little problematic actually let's make this 400 400 okay um, okay that should be good enough you guys can play with the settings as you see fit right this will disappear when you change it to screen but that's okay now uh, with this widget let's just compile and save let's see how it's going Right. As you can see, there's a nice little widget on his face, um, which is fine. You guys can move the widget around. You, to move the widget around, you can just uh, go to enemy intelligence, take the widget wherever it is, and move it up or down. I'm just going to move it up, quite a bit up, actually. Compile, save, see if it's in the right place. Too high. Cool. So what I want to do is in the event graph, let me just pull an event tick because I want to do this on every tick, right? Every frame, I want to update the health of the player. Now in this health bar for enemy, if you click on bind, actually what's going on in the back end is that this widget is calling, you know, the health bar or the percentage of health on every tick. So it doesn't matter whether we do it here or here. So I'm going to do it here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the widget and I'm going to do get user widget object. Now get user widget object is just a command um, to kind of pull out the object from the widget itself. So going from here to the widget class, that's what I'm doing with this. And I'm going to cast to health bar for enemy. All right, I'm going to cast to this blueprint. Remember widgets have a blueprint too. So I'm going to cast that blueprint. And as the health bar for enemy, I'm going to get the progress bar. What's the progress bar called? It's called underscore 276. So get yeah, progress bar 276. Remember, this is just the name of a variable. This is just a variable. Um, Unreal automatically assigns it. You can call it whatever. And then you can pull it. And what I'm going to do is I am going to percent. Actually, we can do set percentage. Percentage. 
strange. Set percent, yeah. I couldn't find it from this, but I could find it from the progress bar because I think it's an attribute of the progress bar. So I'm going to do this, and uh, what I'm going to do is the percentage. I just want it to be the health, whatever the health is of the player, of the enemy intelligence. I just want to set that. Save. So I think when we start, we have a hundred health. So play, pick this up, and bam. Oops, connected. And it's not dealing any damage, but as you can see, the it's it's a hundred health now. Uh, I'll make this a little easier for you guys to see. Hang on. In the viewport widget. Move this lower. Okay. Cool. So awesome. So now I want to deal some damage. And dealing damage doesn't we, we can do it in the third person character blueprint too. But like I said, if you're dealing damage to the enemy intelligence, then do it in the enemy intelligence. Right? So we have this you know, variable here called has taken damage. So he's taken damage this turn. I'll, I'll rename this a little bit. Call it has taken damage this shot, right? This is a little better because, you know, it means that in one swing of the, whatever the thing the player is holding, you can take damage just once. And uh, there's a 1.667 cooldown on how quickly you can take damage. So what I want to do is right after this, after this has taken damage, I want to, reduce the player's uh, reduce the enemy intelligence's health by 25 so i'm going to get this i'm going to do float minus float um, okay and i want to subtract 25 okay and i want to set health as that much all right so i want to reduce the player's health by 25 on every swing so I'm getting the health, reducing 25, and setting that as a new health. And that should work. Okay, it's not working. Mm, let's see. So he's taken, has taken damage. Then I set the health to be whatever the health is, minus 25. That should work. Should work. Let me just print the health. This is how I debug. This is how I debug. I'm just gonna print the value of health. Let's see if it's a problem with our tick or whether it's a problem with 75, 50. Oh yeah, he's losing health. He's definitely losing health. Um, it's important for you guys to know how to debug, so I'm doing this uh, kind of live. So there's an event tick here. In all of this and on the event tick uh, cast to enemy health bar and whatever the value of health is we are setting that in percent oh yes yes I completely forgot I forgot that our health is in 100 and the percentage only goes between 0 and 1 so I have to divide this same mistake I made last time uh, so I'm going to divide this by 100 first because it has to be out of a scale of 0 to 1 it can't be a hundred. Yes, this should work perfectly well. So you guys got a little bit of debugging experience as well. Bam, 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 bam. So here's what I want to do. Uh, if the health hits zero, so after all of this, after all of this, branch, okay? If the value of health is lower than or equal to one, okay? If it's less than one, then we'll just destroy the player. We will destroy actor. And self means the enemy intelligence, so it's gonna destroy this, whichever enemy intelligence uh, that you have there. Maybe we'll play a spawn emitter. Spawn emitter at location. Let's just move all of this. I love to spawn emitters, guys. It's just cool. Let's spawn an explosion at the location of, let's spawn an explosion at the get world location. 
uh, this location okay this should work well hopefully one swing no missed him two okay we broke our code we broke our code uh, okay so if let me just recall the health here I think that's smarter to do the health get health if it's lesser than or equal to one then we spawn emitter location okay that's great and all of this can happen but if it's false then which means he still has health then we still call the delay we still do the delay stuff actually we can just I can just draw from here to here without destroying the actor this just two three and obviously you guys can spawn ah brilliant whoo kill some enemies let's create some more enemies now one oops holding alt adding a few more enemies whoops adding a few more enemies and I can pick up my chair I can slam them okay but one interesting thing is they're not going to take damage to a punch right they're not going to take damage when I punch and uh, I'll let you guys write the code for that it's quite simple actually it's just uh, do an if condition or do a branch on uh, you know whether the player is instead of is smashing check for is punching is in peak punch zone actually if you want to be more accurate and do the exact same thing that's about it guys thanks for joining me on this episode bye bye